all uh, effort to develop external technology ultimately benefits something other than the self of the individual. In the Far East today, people seem to embrace technology, but this has not always been the case. In East Asia, there was a sort of nativist reaction against science introduced by the West. Science, again, had universalist claims. The scientific truth based on reason has to be universal. And then a nativist reaction would say, you know, this is threatening our traditions. Um, the Middle Kingdom is in the middle center of the universe. The emperor is the center of the cosmos. Uh, all these new ideas coming in with Copernicus and so on, upsetting the established order. Another reaction is to say, well, we're backward economically and, and, and otherwise. The Western world is clearly superior in military might and threatening to dominate us. So what we need to do is reject the reasons for our backwardness, which are our own traditions and so on, and adopt science. And science became uh, almost a new religion. Um, the two slogans were Mr. Science and Mr. Democracy. Technology has boomed in the East since then, especially in Japan, which is probably the most technophiliac nation in the world. This enthusiasm seems to be rooted in some particular elements of the Buddhist and Shintoist tradition. There is a strong basis in Christianity and also in, in Western humanism of this idea that the human has a unique soul. A rock doesn't have a soul, a human does, and man is made in the image of God and so on. Whereas uh, in a more animist tradition like the Japanese one, many things can have soul and many things can be sacred, including rocks and other inanimate objects. So there is less of a transgression perhaps for them in the idea that a machine can be brought to life. The interesting case is Japan because it's so advanced in, in robot technology and even on the level of games and virtual reality, the Japanese and the Koreans are way ahead. In our attitude toward everything surrounding us, we are tended to find a living uh, spirit, not only in our human beings, animals, but also everything under the sun. So new technologies, uh, such as robotics or some new machines, we try to relate those even machines and robots, they have their own souls or minds. In the West, most legends about technology, like that of Icarus or Frankenstein, carry the negative message that humans should refrain from trying to defy the gods. In the East, such negative associations are completely absent. We have a lot of heroes or heroines, very friendly robots, which are a part of our society. For example, Ultra Boy, you know, Atom, who is a kind of man-made robot which is always helping us when we fight against some evil. Uh, but they are always trying to realize the dreams of young children. They use some magic and, uh, you know, they are ushering us into the futuristic world. So we have an image, a perception that those machines and uh, new technologies are always uh, enriching our life. This positive attitude towards robots in their collective imagination is also reflected in their actual robots. While Western robots are basically built for military and industrial purposes, Eastern robots are often made for providing pleasure and care. This acceptance of modern technology within Eastern religion has found its most prominent propagator in the Dalai Lama.
From an early age on, the Dalai Lama has shown great interest in science. He has collaborated in several brain research projects. He claims that he would give up his religious beliefs as soon as they would contradict scientific evidence, and even the prospect of a transhuman future doesn't pose a problem for him. Once he claimed that he might reincarnate into a computer as soon as these machines were powerful enough. Now, further development of the technology, and eventually a new type of human being, uh, uh, say, due to these machines, something, uh, then welcome, no problem. If that come, and then, then the reincarnation of the Lama also may be one of like that. <laughs> <laughs> A religion in which science has played an important role from its very origins is Islam. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad proclaimed that God could be known through science. Islam emphasized the fact that we can know God. Christianity in the past has uh, emphasized on the mystery of God. God is a mystery. Yes, of course, there are mysterious aspects of God that we cannot know. But still, Islam emphasized the fact that we can know God. First of all, by studying Revelation, which means by studying the Quran. That is one way. But Muslims also believe, based on the Quran itself, that through knowledge of the universe, we can know God. Because God manifests himself in the universe. God gives many, many signs. In the Quran, more than 750 out of the 6,000 verses are dealing with nature and the urge to study nature through science. This encouragement gave rise to an unprecedented flourishing of knowledge in the centuries after the Prophet. Between 800 and 1500, when Europe retreated into itself and its religion, the Islamic world was the Mecca of science and wisdom. One thousand years ago, algebra was developed in Baghdad. Hospitals are a Muslim invention. They even had functioning robots, automated puppets that could play music, show the time, or even pour wine. Alcohol is an Arabic word. They invented the distillation process. The Arabic world was cosmopolitan, tolerant, and curious. But by the time their knowledge leaked out to Europe, giving rise to the European Renaissance, the Arabic world closed itself off into its own religion, and the Arabic Golden Age faded away. After the 16th century, Islamic science declined. Why? A number of religious scholars came to believe that Religious sciences were more important than the natural sciences and the social sciences. And these scholars were influential in Muslim society. 